Jay here for Shirt for Palette. This is the Paper Talk. As you can see, I'm not live in the studio. I'm not even live. I'm in my kitchen, but that doesn't stop you from getting involved in the chat and the comments. Let us know what you think about all the latest Manchester United news. We're going to be talking about incomings and outgoings as well. So make sure before you do anything, you are subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. We've got loads of good videos coming up. We've got loads of good videos we've already done as well, so you might want to go and check them out. Now, we'll get straight into it. There's quite a few stories doing the rounds about Manchester United looking for both a uh, midfielder and a left-back. Those are the two main positions. But first of all, let's just talk about the goalkeeping situation because we know that Dean Henderson now is basically that. I think he's done in it. He's gone to uh, Crystal Palace. That one we know about. So there's look talk about who's going to come in. And it seems that it's going to be, I'll say, Ben Andia from uh, Fenerbahce. Five million. He's set to come in. Who? Uh, sorry, he will replace Dean Anderson, who's all but gone to Crystal Palace. I don't think it's finalised yet, but it's more or less a done deal. H Henderson out. The, the kid Ben Andia coming in. Happy days. So you're going to see one player go out, one player come in sort of light for light replacement. I don't mean in terms of the way they play or anything. I mean in terms of the position. One third choice goalkeeper or second choice goalkeeper at best for another one because we know that Eric Ten Hag likes to have three goalkeepers. You've obviously got Andre Onana, you've got Tommy Ian, and now you're going to have the kid Bayan Deer making, uh, coming in for Dean Henderson who's making way. Makes sense. Dean Henderson... Obviously, it wasn't working out for him at Old Trafford. There was a time when it looked like he was going to be the number one. He was number one for a brief spell under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He got COVID. I think it was long COVID. Never quite got back into the team after that. Was obviously very bitter about that. We saw some of the comments he made following his low move to Nottingham Forest, where he was firing shots at the club, saying the way he'd been treated was criminal. Just didn't seem to, to get back on track when, when it came to Manchester United following that. And for whatever reason... Eric and I just didn't fancy him. Even when there was question marks around David De Gea, it was never really suggested that Dean Henderson would be coming in or would be the, the first choice goalkeeper or would even be an option for Eric Ten Hag. We saw players like Martin Dubravka and Jack Butland come in whilst Dean Henderson obviously made way. So it's one of those where it makes sense. It's a little bit sad because I was watching an interview with him where he was saying that he... As a kid, his, his, his two dreams, I think, were to play for Carlisle or to play for Manchester United because, obviously, he comes from that sort of neck of the woods. Unfortunately, didn't happen for him. But we move on. I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? And I think Dean Anderson's a funny one because of that interview. I think a lot of United fans were sort of unhappy with him and it left a bit of a sour taste in him out. And it's one of those where you think, if he came back to United, would he get a great reception? I'm not so sure he would. I think it'd be a bit meh. Not boo him, but I don't think you'd be too sort of enamoured with him. And it's a shame because he's a, a player that was at the club for a very long time. I think he was at the club since the age of 14, came through the academy, did really well. And at one point, at one point, briefly looked like he was going to be Manchester United's number one. But he moves on and so do we. So let's talk about the left-back situation because... We've been linked with a, a host of left backs, Marcus Alonso, um, Sergio Reguilon, and Mark Cucurella. And it seems like Cucurella is now the, the sort of leading candidate. It looks like something is happening with that. We've heard this from various newspapers all over the gaff. The evening news are running with it, saying this morning, uh, United begin Cucurella loan talks. United have opened talks with Chelsea over a loan deal for Mark Cucurella as they seek to sign a left back before Friday's transfer deadline. We know that uh, Tyrell Molassa. Is injured. He's expected back in a few weeks. We also know that Luke Shaw is out for a bit longer. It could be anything. I think it's around two months that Luke Shaw is going to be out for. So Manchester United need to bring someone in. Cucurella spoke about this on Sunday. Very good at Brighton. Very poor at Chelsea. I think that's it in a nutshell. I don't think there's you can sugarcoat it or twist it any other way. He was really good at Brighton to the point where both Pep Guardiola and would it have been Thomas Tuchel? Well, let's just say Chelsea. Pep Guardiola wanted him. Chelsea wanted him. Chelsea were willing to pay more than City were. Chelsea got him. His time at Stamford Bridge has been nothing short of disastrous. Now, you can look at it and go, OK, he was there during the end of Tuchel, the Graham Potter era and the Frank Lampard return. All three of those managers at that time struggled. And the team struggled and all the players more or less struggled. So do you look at Cucurella and go, OK, he was involved in a bit of a horror show at Chelsea where it was all going wrong. It's not his fault. Or do you look at it and go, that's worrying that he went to a bigger club and couldn't, um, couldn't handle it. Personally, if the manager wants him on a loan deal for cover. Makes sense for me. Give it a go. I mean, 
you need to you need to have more than just Diogo Delo as a left back option. I know there is the kid, kid Alvaro Fernandez, but it looks like Eric Tanag is, is determined to bring someone in. So if he is going to bring someone in, out of the options we had of Regulon, Alonso and Cucurella, I think Cucurella is probably the best option. And it looks like there's a little bit of movement there. So as always, we'll keep you posted and let you know if there are any twists and turns on that. Um, let's talk about midfielders because this has all got a bit strange because at one point it looked like Sofian Amrabat to Manchester United was more or less a done deal. Like everyone was reporting that he was on his way, that we were going to get him, that he was keen on a move. United had to sell to to bring to buy, but there was deals in in place that were going to make that happen. However, now it looks like it's not going to. And there's reports that his agents frustrated at the way it's been handled, the way it's gone. I think the Telegraph have run with it, other papers have run with it as well. And it does look like if push comes to shove, Sofian Amrabat ain't coming to Manchester United. Now he's done everything he can. Apparently he's been so. Sort of more or less gone on strike almost. He said, like, you know, he's, I think the Fiorentina uh, boss has said, like, you can just go and train on your own. He's not involved in the squad. He's going to move. He wants to move. The club have said, if he wants to make a move, he needs to make that happen. But he can't make Manchester United buy him. He can't make Manchester United spend whatever money it is. Now, there was even talk that Fiorentina were willing to do a loan move. I think we had this over the weekend, that Fiorentina were looking at it going, look, if you want him, you can have him on loan. They're that keen to get him out of the door or at least get him gone so they can bring someone in. Maybe they can do a low move of their own to bring someone in. I'm not sure. But now it seems like he's not coming to Manchester United. And a lot of the talk is on Hoiberg. Now, we had this yesterday. We had um, Damesh Seth on the channel. Joe spoke to him. It's been reported elsewhere as well. It was in the mirror. I think I've seen it. I've seen it on Sky Sports. That Hoiberg to Manchester United is looking like something that could happen. That there's been initial contact between Manchester United and Spurs for a low move for... Um, Sorry, for a deal um, with for Hoiberg, as well as the, the the move that we were talking with, with Chelsea for um, Marco Carrello. So Hoiberg to United could happen. That That is something that's looking, I wouldn't say likely, possible. I don't think Amrabat to Manchester United is looking possible at all at the minute. I think that's almost done. I really do. All the noises are that it's been overstated, it's been overplayed, exaggerated, whatever you want to say. There was a slight interest there, but it ain't happening. So it looks like Amrabat isn't happening. Hoiberg could happen, though, because we know as well Postacoglu doesn't really fancy him, I think. I know it's early days, but he's not been getting the sort of game. He's not been start getting the starts that he was under the likes of Conte and other managers. And let's not forget, this is a, a player who played a lot of football for Spurs over the last few years. So for, for him not to be playing is quite a big, big deal. It's obviously it's a big shift there, and he's going to want to carry on playing football. And if he can do that at Manchester United, then... Happy days, and you know, let's let's see that happen. I think he's a decent midfielder. I think as an option, it'd, it'd be a good one. Let us know in the comments whether you disagree. Do you want to see Hoiberg come in? Do you want to see Cucurella come in? Do you think the kid, uh, Biandia, I probably pronounced that completely wrong, uh, is a, the right man to come in as a second or third choice goalkeeper? Also, doing the rounds this morning, one potential outgoing is Mason Greenwood. I think I News are running with a story that Mason Greenwood could be heading to the best sixers in Turkey. They're interested in bringing him in on loan. He needs to go and play somewhere. There's been links with Saudi Arabia. There's been links with Italy. Every time he gets linked with a club, that club seems to come out with a statement or some sort of social media post or just leak it to the press. They're not interested in him. It does seem like he's become very toxic and we all know what's going on there and the reasons behind it. But the latest one is that the Sixers could be interested in bringing him in on a six-month loan deal. We'll wait and see what happens. As always, we'll keep you posted. We're going to be back later on. Myself and Joe are going to be back tonight. We're going to have transfers live. Long shift today. Don't worry, I've got a break in the middle. So make sure you are hitting like, share and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that good stuff.